Hello everyone, my name is Eve Marshall. I am an artisan felter and I've come on today to show you how to make a wet felted butterfly. Um, so as an example, we've got these little butterflies made from merino wool robing, which they sell at Riverside Beads. Um, so the reason um, to make a butterfly. They make a great brooch if you stitch a brooch back on. Um, I've done lots of them with a friend of mine and she's made a copper chain to go um, around the back of them and wear them as a necklace. Um, if we were going out to allow to go out to weddings they make great little fascinators. Um, so yeah it's just sort of quite an easy um, project to do. Um, it's quite it's quite quick too so um, that's why I wanted to come on and show you how to make them so I'm just gonna squeeze you down there so you can have a look at my work table so I've got a couple of butterflies that are made in some other lives I've got a piece of bubble wrap bubbles facing up and it's on top of a towel which is on top of my table um, so just need something that's going to absorb the water a bit so we're not using loads of water so you don't get extremely wet you just want to protect your table so i've got an oil cloth cover on my table and then a towel and then a piece of bubble wrap in my little water jug over here i've got a squirt of green fairy liquid and the rest is nice warm bath water i've got a little bowl over here to collect the water and the supplies so I am going to make a bluish greenish pinkish butterfly today so I've got some black wool and some different blues there these are all pieces of merino roving um, great for wet felting good for needle felting um, and that's what we're going to use so to get started you need to have a piece of acrylic felt so I've cut out this butterfly as you can see from this piece of um, acrylic felt. The reason I use acrylic felt to start off with is because I want my butterfly to hold its shape. Okay, so that is very stiff um, butterfly there. If I just made it out of wool, then you'd get something that is felted and lovely, but a little bit floppy. And so if you're wearing that as a brooch, it would be hard to tell it was a, a dragonfly the whole time because it would be quite floppy. So if you have something on the inside of your piece, it means it's like a resist and it sort of helps hold its shape. So it, it can't, can't shrink into a weird, weird shape either. So it's sort of like a, a stencil, but it's stuck inside of your piece. So I've just cut that piece out of a piece of acrylic felt, so that sort of plasticky felt that people use for crafting, um, that's there. So I'm going to start with my black wool and I'm just going to pull off little pieces and lay them in one direction on top of my bubble wrap. Um, what I want to do is make a piece that is about the size of my template, so I'm just going to move you over a bit there so you can see a bit more. Um, it is easier to felt wet felt fibres if they are quite fine so you never really want to lay down really thick layers at once um, because it will take you a lot longer to wet felt them so try and teach like the instant gratification of felting rather than the felting for days or rolling for hours felting um, so fine layers are better you can see that my template fits right in there um, now i'm going to do a layer going in the opposite direction again really fine pieces the more gentle you pull the wool the more fluffier your wool will be there. So just do a layer. I see lots of you are watching. If you have questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer them. Um, I've got my jug here with a little bit of fairy and some warm water in. I'm just going to shake that on top. So I've just put some holes in my lid just so it comes out 
slowly rather than a waterfall on top. So that's nice and wet now. I'm going to put my template on top of that there and press it down with the other side of the bubble wrap. So bubble wrap is always, the bubbles are always facing what you're working on. So always touching the wool. And it just means it's a surface that won't stick to your hands. And because of all the little ravines in between the bubbles, the water stays in place rather than moving off the table and onto your floor, or onto your lap. So now what we want to do is we want to pull the edges over onto our butterfly. So I'm just going to tease those bits apart there and tease these bits apart here and do the same for those bits there just so that when I pull my design my black wool over my template doesn't change really the shape of my butterfly so I'm just going to fold my pieces up to the edges of my butterfly template on there just pull them round. I want them right butting up against um, my template. I don't want them to be too loose around it. So I'm just pulling them taut. Because there's soap in the um because there's soap in the water, uh, my hands aren't really attaching to the fibers. If there wasn't soap there, it'd be a bit of a pain. It would want to stick to me instead of to itself. So the soap is and acting of a lubricant um, so things don't stick to us. So we just bring them round so we still get that shape there of our butterfly. Just pushing them in with your fingers so that it's a nice tight shape. And then we just fold that back on top and give it a good press. Okay, so if I turn this over now, you can see that the back of it is black. And now I want to do the same on the front of it. So I want to cover that with a layer of wool. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to lay fibers going in one direction on top of my butterfly. All going in the same direction. So to make something wet felt, um, it's easiest if you have the fibers going in two different directions. So we do a layer going in one direction and a layer going in the opposite direction. Um, for this butterfly, um, which is probably like about A6 size, um, I'm using about 10 grams of wool, which is about half um, of a piece of wool that they sell at Riverside. So get a couple butterflies out of each and just shake some more soapy water on top don't want too much it's already quite wet anyways press down the bubble wrap on top soak all the water in and flip it over so then when we peel off here the edges of my template I can see there, I know it's hard to see on the camera because it's black on black, but again, I'm just going to pull that bit apart there and that a bit apart there and tease it apart there and apart there because butterfly has like four wings, doesn't it? So we're sort of dividing up those bits and I'm just folding it over again. So, um, yeah, you could start with a black piece of acrylic felt and then your butterfly would be black. But the merino wool wouldn't stick to it because it's plastic rather than wool. So creating a base means that your next layer of fiber is attached to it. So we're just sort of covering it up with the black wool, pulling it in nice and taut all the way around. So. Um, as I'm moving the fibers up against the template, I can feel it get quite taut against it. I can also feel that it's sort of thick in some areas and thin in others. Don't really worry about that because it will all fuse together during the wet felting process. So 
squeeze that again so it's all flat and I'm just wiping off my fingers because my fingers get so wet and then it gets so sticky afterwards. So I've got my butterfly template here. I guess I'm imagining that that is the top wings and that is the bottom wings. Um, your butterfly doesn't have to be a specific butterfly. It can just be whatever colors you want. I don't worry too much about the backs of my butterflies because usually it's going to be made into a brooch or like I said, a fascinator or a necklace or something. So don't really worry about what's on the back, but you could if you wanted to. Um, okay, so I've got my, my black base. I'm going to make the top two wings one color and the bottom two wings a different color so that they stand out a bit. So I've just got some turquoise here. I'm just gonna pull off chunks I'm pulling them from the center of it rather than the end because I want them to bend in the middle so that I get that fluffy bit that goes off the edge and the sort of bent bit in the center so it's got an end. I quite like when things come off the edges of my butterfly wings because it means that it will hold it more in place and it also looks quite nice going around, around that outer edge rather than just having the stark black. So I've got turquoise upper wings. I'm going to have pink bottom wings. Same thing. I'm holding the wool so it's folded in half. And then I'm just pulling off a couple chunks to lay in there. So we've got a very tropical butterfly going on here. And it wants to stick to me rather than down there. So instead of just putting my hand on it, I'm just going to fold over the bubble wrap and push it down. Because I've got those bits that are coming off the edge of my butterfly, I'm just going to flip it over and pull those edges in. So this is the back of my butterfly. I'm not really worried too much about what it looks like. Um, you know, it's one of those things you could do if you wanted to. I quite like the quickness of this craft because you can make multiple in an hour rather than just making one very detailed one so press that down again and we'll flip back over to the front again so I've got sort of blue bits and pink bits so I might add in some other colors I've got a little bit of light blue I might just put in down a stripe there and a stripe on top and then I've got some green here might just put some green going through the middle of it so you can be sort of artistic as you want during this stage. I've got here some um, silky threads too that I like to add into my pieces so I'm just going to add those in there to add a bit of shininess. You can see that everything wants to stick to me it's because my fingers are wet so I just move those over there. Um, I have some sparkly fibres here, some Angelina that I'm just going to mix with some wool and put them on. So I'm going to take off a little bit of dark blue and a little bit of Angelina and just mix them up together. Um, if I didn't mix them up together and I just laid them on top of my butterfly, they wouldn't felt in because um, Angelina is made out of plastic and it wouldn't combine with the wool unless it was com um, had sort of mixed in so you're sort of tangling it up with it so you can lay it on and then put a veil over it but if you really want it to sort of stay stuck then that's the easiest way so I have a little bit of sparkle in there now and a bit of blue wool I'm just going to lay in there so my butterfly is a bit sparkly maybe a bit in the middle too and then I've got these little white dots, which are called neps, and they're quite fun to use. They don't actually stay where you put them. They kind of move around, which is quite nice in the wet felting process. I like that nothing is really permanent. It will just do what it wants to do when it wants to do it. So don't I don't mind. I can embrace that. It makes it playful. It's a bit like watercolor. You know, you can't really control it. It will do 
what it wants to do. So I've just got some turquoise wool and I'm just mixing some of those little white dots in there. Um, if you didn't have any extras at home, you could use um, like embroidery threads or knitting wool or um, things like sequins and beads are a bit hard. They're a bit better to do after you've felted it and stitched them on um, because they don't have any um, rough edges to attach into the piece. So. I would save those and, and stitch them on after. So I've just put those down there. Again, I'll just give it a press. Instead of pressing with my hands, it's better if it, you press it with the uh, bubble wrap and I'm just folding those bits in there. So that's just the back. I'm not too worried about the back. Give it a press, flip it back over got my butterflies pretty much ready to go he just needs a body so I'm gonna go back to my piece of black here and pull off a long chunk um, most butterflies their body sticks out the bottom of their wings but some of them don't it's sort of up to you whether it goes just in their wings or it sticks out the top so quite big piece of merino wool here. I'm going to tie one end in a knot. That's going to be his head or her head. So I've got the knot there and the fluffy bit coming off there and a fluffy bit coming off there. So the head is going to sit in the inner bit of the top wings and go down there. And I'll just flatten that down holding it in place and flip it over so I've got like the big troll hair bit there I don't need that on my butterfly so I'm going to fold it so it's going over that knot and onto the back of my butterfly I also don't need that long of a tail on my butterfly so I'm just going to fold that up there it will just get attached into the back of the butterfly there so it's wet enough give it a press and flip it over and see my butterfly is ready to go so I'm gonna start wet felting it so a bit more water on top and fold over the bubble wrap and then a little bit of water on top and I'm just going to start rubbing that with my fingers to make all of the wool attach. So we're sort of gentle to begin with so that we're not moving things around and then we can get a bit rougher with it. Um, so if you look at wool under a microscope it's got little tiny barbs on it when you add warm water those barbs open up and when you agitate them they fuse together so once you've felted something um, it's impossible to bring back to the fluffy wool that it began with so that one there i couldn't pull that apart and make it into that fluffy wool anymore it's it's changed it's sort of chemical makeup or I'm not a scientist so that's probably not the right word but so this is agitating sort of the, the top layer of wool onto the black bit of wool I'm just going to turn it over now and do a bit on the other side so if you've come to one of my workshops at Riverside then during the wet felting process, I usually hand out my little octopuses because they help do this without touching the piece too much. So, um, but you know, not having one doesn't mean you can't wet felt. You can just use your hand to rub it together. I just want to go until everything is stuck down so it's it's a couple minutes a couple minutes on one side and and a few more on the front because you've got a bit more going on on the front 
Um, it's better to use warm water when you are um, pouring it onto your butterfly. Um, it's a lot more chance that the felting process will happen. Cold water will do it, but it takes a bit more effort to make it felt um, during that time. So just giving it a good, good rub. Fuse all those bits together. Okay, if I open it up now, I want to make sure things are staying in place. So if I give them a poke, I can see they've stuck to the black background. That means it's ready to be um, sort of the stronger bit of felting to be done. So we did sort of the gentle stage and now we're going to be a bit rougher with it. So I'm just going to take it, I'm going to fold it in half and just squeeze out some of the water. Not a lot of the water. And I want it wet and I want it heavy, but I don't really want it dripping down my arms. So keep it, keep it moist. Um, you can see the head there, that's fine. And I'm just going to fold it in half and then gently um, push it back and forth against itself. You can see as I'm doing that, those lovely little white nips are moving to where they want to be rather than where I put them. And that's okay. That happens during the wet felting process. It makes it artistic, I'd say. Um, if you wanted something that looked specifically like the exact butterfly on in a book, then best to cut it out of pieces of acry acrylic felt and glue it all together. This is more of a, a playing um, thing. So I'm just going back and forth, rubbing up and down, and it's just um, wet felting the middle layer together. So all that black wool is starting to shrink. Um, so I just go sort of back and forth and as I'm going I can feel it getting a bit drier so I'm just going to shake some more water on it now. If you had it too dry when you were rubbing it um, then the layers could try and pull themselves off which we wouldn't want so that soapy water is very good for making your butterfly. You don't want it ever to dry at any point in the wet felting process. Um, That's why it's called wet felting. So if it's ever dry and your hands aren't full of soap, then you need to go back and add more water and add more soap to it. So now I've done going that direction, I'm going to go this direction. And it's the nice thing, because we started with um, a piece of acrylic felt, it's can only shrink until it hits um, the acrylic felt. And that's that's really nice. It's a nice project for a beginner because your piece doesn't change shape. It doesn't go sort of wibbly wobbly like um, say a picture does when you felt it. Um, so you have a bit more control over what's happening because we've stuck a resist in the middle of it. So it's just a bit more of this rubbing until it's nice and firm. So when we started rubbing it was a bit floppy and it felt like it was quite delicate. Now that I'm rubbing it it's a lot stiffer um, and it doesn't feel very delicate. It's holding its shape there and everything is is pretty much fused. You know the nets and things they'll move around but they always do. Um, so it's just a question of getting it completely felted and just going around rubbing the pieces together. These are lovely once you've felted them because you could stitch loads of beads onto them or like I was saying sequins onto them. You can add some wire for their antenna. Um, I mean the Riverside beads when I went there last year it was just full of the most sparkling beads that would look amazing on these. Um, so now I've gone um, back and forth on there. It has felted itself together and I can feel that the head is almost felted so I'm just going to 
take the head now and rub it on top of the bubbles just to fuse those sides because I can't really access those sides with my hands when I'm rubbing it back and forth so that is just sort of pulling those edges in and fusing them together so the bubble wrap is sort of like a sandpaper and sort of pushing all the fibres together. Oh, sorry, it's making my camera move back and forth. Okay, so we've got his head in there. I'm going to give it a nice squeeze. You can see how rough you can be with them, even though they started off being very fluffy and and very delicate now that it's felted together um, I can squidge it into a ball and I'm not worried about it anymore um, so I'm just if I was doing this as a class I would rinse it under the tap um, and get some of the soap off of it but because I'm with you guys I will just squeeze it in a towel so you can see there that some of the neps have started to pull themselves off i can leave them in there or i can give them a tug and they'll come off the head is there and the tail's down there so we've got a nice felted butterfly um now there's different ways that you can use them um i know that there was only a couple of you hello while uh, <laughs> while we started off so um I was saying that they're they're great because they hold their shape so well so they're really stiff inside them um, if you just make something out of wool uh, it tends to do what it wants but it also goes a bit fluffy uh, fluffy it goes a bit floppy yeah there's the word it goes a bit floppy you don't want something that's too floppy if you want to make it into say a brooch or a fascinator or a necklace you want it to hold its shape so because we've put a piece of acrylic felt in there it means it's really stiff and it's very strong and it would be a really nice surface to stitch onto or if you wanted to needle felt onto it then you could um, this one here if I hold it up to the camera I did some free motion um, embroidery on it so with my sewing machine I just um, added some uh, definition to it. Felting onto wool is a lovely, lovely surface to uh, stitch into either with beads or with your machine is quite a nice um, thing to do. Anyway, that was my quick demo of the day. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions you can put them in the comments and I'm happy to answer them um, and I hope you all have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye.